Welcome to Dunwoody College of Technology, Class of 2022. Please welcome representatives of Dunwoody's Board of Trustees. They are accompanied by today's student speaker and keynote speaker, as well as Dunwoody's Provost, Academic Deans and Directors, Dean of Students, and members of the President's Cabinet. Now joining us are members of Dunwoody's faculty. Entering the auditorium, led by the faculty marshals for each department, are the fall, spring, and summer graduates of the class of 2022. Please welcome the automotive department with graduates from the automotive collision repair and refinishing, automotive service technology. Honda Professional Automotive Career Training and Toyota Technician Training and Education Network Programs. Please welcome graduates from the Business Department, including Applied Management and Leadership and Business Management and Leadership. And now, the Computer Technology Department, including graduates from Computer Networking Systems, Computer Networking Technician, Computer Systems Analyst, Cybersecurity, Web Development, and Web Programming and Database Development. Now entering the auditorium are the graduates from the Construction Sciences and Building Technology Department, which includes construction management, construction project management, electrical construction and maintenance, electrical construction design and management, facilities operation and management, HVAC installation and residential service, HVAC refrigeration system servicing, land surveying and surveying and civil engineering technology.
Next up is the health sciences and technology graduates, all of whom have earned a degree in radiologic technology. Now entering the auditorium are the graduates from the robotics and manufacturing, which include graduates from the automated systems and robotics, our first graduating class from automation and controls engineering technology, followed by graduates from design for manufacturing, 3D printing, electronic engineering technology, electronic technology, engineering drafting and design, industrial controls, industrial controls and robotics, machine tool technology, right skills now for manufacturing, welding and metal fabrication, and welding technology. Now please welcome Dunwoody's new School of Design, which includes graduates from architectural drafting and design, architecture, graphic design and production, and interior design. And now we welcome Dunwoody's School of Engineering, which this year includes our first graduates in electrical engineering, followed by industrial engineering and technology, mechanical engineering, and software engineering.
family and friends, I present to you the class of 2022. Take a seat, everybody. It's my pleasure on behalf of Dunwoody's Board of Trustees, faculty, staff, alumni, and soon to be graduates to welcome you to this evening's commencement ceremony celebrating the class of 2022. Before we begin, I'd like to take a moment to recognize any veterans, active duty, or reserve military personnel who are joining us tonight. So if you are pleased in the military or currently serving or a past veteran, please stand up so we can thank you for your service. Thank you again for your service. Please be seated. I'm pleased to introduce to you our student speaker for today's commencement. Bridget Daldorf is a graduate of the Engineering Drafting and Design Program. She is also an Academic Excellence Award winner and the recipient of the Alumni Student Leadership Award. Bridget discovered her love of manufacturing design while attending the Math and Science Academy in Woodbury. There she participated in school's first robotics team a team she continues to mentor to this day. She then put those same skills to work at Dunwoody when she joined the college's autonomous snowplow team and helped lead that team to a second place finish. Bridget already knows what she wants in a career and it is to find a way to help others. She is already interning as a designer at Boston Scientific's model shop and plans to build a career in prosthetic and medical design. Please welcome Bridget Daldorf. Before I begin, I'd like to say thank you to all of the teachers and staff at Dunwoody. I think I speak for everyone when I say that those of us graduating today would not be here if not for your support. Thank you for helping hold us up. Congratulations to our graduates. We finally made it. Our graduation journey wasn't always easy. COVID moved classes online, and we had to adapt and adjust. There were little things that just didn't go our way. A test that didn't go as well as we had hoped, or late nights the day before our project was due, five cups of coffee to make it through our 7.30 a.m. labs. There were, halfway through spring semester, we got to relearn everyone's names after seeing them without masks for the first time. But what stands out through all of this is the resilience and perseverance of our Dunwoody grads. Whenever something went wrong or we failed, we stood up and kept going, helped up by the support of our peers, family, teachers, and staff. Aaron Sorkin said that the world doesn't care how many times you fall down, as long as it's one fewer than the number of times you get back up. The accomplishments we are able to achieve, even in the ever-changing situ situations we face, is remarkable and have taught us skills that will serve us well in our future endeavors. I had the pleasure of interacting with many different departments during my time at Dunwoody and was consistently amazed at the remarkable ideas and creations of students. Dunwoody has long been known for its legacy of producing innovative, hardworking students, and I can only imagine how much further this graduating class will carry Dunwoody's legacy. When writing this, a question I came back to a lot is what makes Dunwoody Dunwoody? And as I kept coming back to that thought, I reflected on memories with fellow students and teachers, making coffee at our machine instructor Steve's desk in the mornings, our Saturday autonomous snowplow meetings, board game nights with peers, and pottery making with Kate's Club. And then I thought back to one of my projects this last semester. I had wanted to build a penny press forever. It was a bit of a dream project. So when the opportunity arose to build some sort of mechanical machine, I knew exactly what I wanted to build. However, you can't just 3D print a penny press. My group reached out to many different departments and so many individuals from the different departments rallied together to help machine, tool harden, and assemble the project. 
I'm pretty sure at one point we had half of Brian Nelson's machining class helping with assembly. Reflecting on these memories, they show Dunwoody's spirit of community. They were all times that teachers and students went above and beyond and cared about each other from a personal point of view rather than just academic. That community is what makes the difference. It is what makes Dunwoody different and what makes Dunwoody Dunwoody. We've spent the last few years gaining knowledge and wisdom from our teachers. And as we continue into the industry, we keep learning just in different ways. Tom Bodit said, the difference between school and life, in school, you're taught a lesson and then given a test. In life, you're given a test that teaches you a lesson. Earlier this year, Dunwoody had its autonomous snowplow competition. Now, a bit of background here. When I joined the team in September, I assumed there would be people who knew how to code. December rolled around, and I realized we were in trouble when EJ pulled out the micro basic script coding manual. But we learned. There was some trial and error. I narrowly avoided taking Russell out with a uh, robot when trying to tune a PID loop. But by the time competition rolled around, the robot drove itself. Or so we thought. We decided to test our collaborative code one last time before we competed. And during our test run, robots made turns where they shouldn't and didn't where they should. So naturally, the logical conclusion was to spend the next 30 minutes before our match attempting to rewrite all of the code. We went right up to the starting line deploying code onto the robot. With no idea what was going to happen, we watched as our robot made random turns in the middle of the track directly crashed into an obstacle we were supposed to avoid and went rogue, all while clearing large amounts of snow on its mission to an unknown destination. Now, hearing this story, I'm sure it sounds like we failed. Actually, we placed second. <laughs> we learned, we failed, but we kept trying and succeeded. Things don't always go with way, the way we'd like them to, but we keep trying and learn from our mistakes. So with that, as all of you leave here today, starting a new chapter of your lives in the workforce, pursuing further education, or wherever your path may lead you, I'd like to challenge you to never stop learning. It can be easy to get stuck in the daily grind, but I encourage you to stay passionate about what you do. Continue to grow and learn. View every failure as a learning opportunity and a way to build new foundations on which to grow. Thank you. Thank you, Bridget. You did a great job of representing all the graduates. We wish you well and, and all the best luck. Now it's my pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker, Jasmine Darden. Jazz is an entrepreneur, educator, and creator. She's also a 2017 engineering, drafting, and design graduate from Dunwoody. Prior to attending Dunwoody, Jazz earned a Bachelor of Arts in Physics and a Bachelor of Science in Mathematics from Augsburg College. Since graduating from Dunwoody, Jazz has used her boundless energy to invent, create, solve, and inspire. She returned to Dunwoody as an adjunct instructor in our Design for Manufacturing 3D Printing Program. She's founded several businesses, including a 3D printing company that made and donated more than 30,000 ear-saving mask accessories during the pandemic, which she trademarked Ear Hero. She also serves as the director of the Young Inventors Challenge with People Play, and still finds time to lead the Innovation Lab for two high school programs that provide STEM education. Jazz serves on the Dunwoody Alumni Board and was recently selected as one of the 2022 Women in Business honorees by the Minneapolis St. Paul Business Journal. We're pleased to have her with us today. Please join me in welcoming Jasmine Darden. Awesome. Thank you for the introduction, President Wagner. It's such an honor to be here today to tell you a bit about my story and hopefully leave you with a touch of inspiration. <sighs> take a deep breath. Take it in. Take this moment in. When I was young, I used to be really shy, like extremely shy. Every day, my mom would have to listen to me scream and cry as she dropped me off at preschool. And one day, we met outside, and the same thing. She'd have to listen to me scream and cry as she walked back to the car. By the time she got home, she had a voicemail to come back and pick me up. Apparently, my teacher was holding me, trying to comfort me, squatted down like this, 
And I don't know, what would you have done if you were in my situation? Because I bit my teacher in the cheek and I didn't let go either. <laughs> now, I don't remember what the conversation was on the way home that day, but who would have thought that shy little girl would be standing up here in front of you today? Class of 2022. I said class of 2022. That's right. You made it. And on behalf of Dunwoody, we couldn't be more proud. Actually, I'm going to take that back. Class of 2022, instructors, staff, and everybody who supported them in the back, we made it. Thank you. Most of these students spent their entire Dunwoody career during the pandemic, and I couldn't give this speech without addressing their immense flexibility. To the instructors, we, switch, we quickly had to switch to remote learning, recording our lectures, hating them, and then starting over. To the students, thank you to, for your flexibility and patience. As we had our mics on mute, we um, had to navigate trying to have some students remote and some students in person, and for having to relearn all of your names after the mask mandate ended because I had no idea you had a mustache under there. Congratulations to the class of 2022. This will definitely be one to remember. It wasn't long ago, go ahead. <laughs> it wasn't long ago that I was sitting in your seats eager to set out into the world. I graduated in 2017. I don't know what brought me there, but one day I stopped by Dunwoody after work, asked admissions for a tour, and the rest is history. I enrolled in the engineering drafting and design program. Now, mind you, I already had my bachelor's degrees in math and physics, but I knew this was the right step for me. I remember my first day of school getting lost in the Hogwarts of stairwells. I wore a V-neck t-shirt, shorts, Sperry's, and my hair down. My hair was a lot longer back then. I went to machine shop class and my teacher said, don't ever show up like that here again. Well, I don't think that's exactly how it went, but after learning about machine shop safety, um, I knew that's pretty much what I heard. That day, I went home, got a bunch of pairs of the same jeans, a bunch of black t-shirts, boots, and safety glasses. Because at Dunwoody, we learn how to do, and you have to be dressed and ready for it. I remember my first project I got to design in 3D print. I remember writing all over the whiteboards during study sessions with my classmates. No surprises that I became a teacher. I remember flying my drone in the gym, and I remember my final project, making a fully working electric bike. For graduation, I made bow ties for all of my classmates and then had to tie them all for them because none of them knew how. It's a tradition I still carry on with my graduates today. You see, at Dunwoody, there's a legacy of those who came before you. It's a legacy of hard work and pride. I feel like every time I mention Dunwoody to people, they always tell me about somebody who graduated from here and all the great work they've set out to do. Now, no pressure to you guys. I know I'm leaving a legacy through the lives I've touched, like my little brother sitting over here who came through the 3D printing program. Yes, it's interesting to have your little brother in class, but I couldn't be more proud as he's now working as an application engineer for diversified plastics. <sighs> Thank you. Share your story, make Dunwoody proud. I know this is what drives me to continue to do so much youth outreach, especially for little kids who look like me. I wanna show them that there's opportunities out there for them too. A few years ago, I went to a school in Minneapolis and talked to over 60 preschoolers about 3D printing. I never think they're too young. I always leave them with something that they can take home that was 3D printed. So a few days later, I was roller skating at Roller Gardens, and all of a sudden I hear, Jazz, Jazz. There was a lady off on the side that was calling my name. So I walked over to her, and I said, I'm sorry, um, can you remind me how we know each other? And she goes, I don't, she does. She pointed down to this little girl who looked just like me. I squatted down to her level, and she said, you gave me the dinosaur. And I was like, yeah. Do you remember how the dinosaur was made? And she said, the machine made it. And I was like, yes, the 3D printer. And she gave me a high five and skipped away. 
I continued to talk to her mom, and her mom said she had been standing there calling my name, but her voice wasn't quite powerful enough for me to hear it over the music. Now, little does that girl know how powerful that conversation was to me. You never know what impact you have on other people. Welcome to the Dunwoody Legacy. Thank you. Now I have a question. When was the last time you tried something for the first time? Honestly, think of something specific that you tried for the first time. What did it feel like? Was it fun and exciting? Were you nervous or scared? Was it a one time's enough or would you go out and do it again? No matter what you felt or what emotion you had, it doesn't matter, it's fine. Some of you guys might be nervous to walk across this stage today because what if you trip? Or what if you go to shake hands with the wrong hand? Or what if you drop your degree? But I promise you this, tomorrow, next week, or next year, you will remember that you graduated today because today you are doing something new. <sighs> ah, it's a big moment. Think back to that moment of doing something for the first time. Is there anything vivid you remember seeing? Anything you can smell or taste? Maybe it's something that you remember hearing or something you can feel to the touch. Just like today, take all of this in. The reason why you remember all of those things is because your brain was fired up taking all that new information in, which made that event memorable. Remember today to make today memorable. People often ask me, how did I overcome my shyness, or how did I become so adventurous? It's something I think about a lot, actually, and I think I just landed on the answer. It's because I'm constantly trying new things, taking in new experiences, being proud of who I'm becoming, and I have stories to share. I want to encourage each one of you to become somebody who tries something new. And it doesn't have to be anything big. Those things don't have to be related to each other or related to any kind of goal. Like today, I am giving a commencement speech for the first time. This is the biggest speech I've done in my life. And I feel confident and prepared, not because I practiced a bunch of times. I mean, I, I did a few. But because I have felt nervous and excited about so many things before. The feeling of stepping out of my comfort zone is familiar to me. And so I took that into today. I prepared myself by having a whole bunch of new experiences over the last few months. I flew a hawk and let it land on my arm. I went to a circus. I took a class on glass blowing and pottery. I picked up a marker and literally just started drawing. I went ax throwing, I went rock climbing. <sighs> um, I took a yoga class even though I couldn't touch my toes. All of these new experiences prepared me for today. I hosted an award show, I was on the History Channel, and just two days ago I got scuba certified. <laughs> Thanks. I'm excited to start exploring. That first breath that I took underwater is one I will always remember. It pushed me physically, mentally, and emotionally, but all of these experiences prepared me to be here today. Now, people usually say they don't want to try something new because they're not going to be good at it. But who cares? No one, um, stop putting so much pressure on yourself. No one is expecting you to put on a pair of ice skates and be able to go out and do a triple axle. But these new experiences come with, um, or the more new experiences we have, the more we loosen up this fear of failure, the more confidence we get, and then the more we can go out and try more new things. When you start trying new things, you'll start meeting new people. I've made some of the most incredible connections just by going to that conference, attending an art show, or going to that get-together that I felt like I really didn't know anybody. You never know who you're going to meet or what connections you're going to make. You know the saying, I was in the right place at the right time? We've heard that before. I want you to give you, yourselves more credit. Sure, sometimes it is pure coincidence, but most times, you put yourself in that right place at that right time. And don't forget to live to the level of your smile. Let me explain. I was on a, a forum, an online forum for downhill skiing, and someone asked the question, 
How do I know what level to ski when I travel to the mountains, the real mountains, out west? I was like, that's a good question. And someone simply put, ski to the level of your smile. I loved this. Yeah, it doesn't matter if you ski greens, blues, black diamonds, or double black diamonds. You don't want to be panicking out on the mountain, but you don't want to be bored either. Find that sweet spot. And so I took this and related it to life. Live to the level of your smile. I started telling people about this, and I very quickly got challenged at an aerospace luncheon. They said, if you always live to the level of your smile, when will you challenge yourself? When will you push yourself out of your comfort zone and grow? All eyes were back on me, and I quickly had to think of a response. And so I told this story. One day I was climbing at the bouldering gym. So bouldering is just rock climbing, but without a harness. The climbs aren't quite as high, and the, the floor is really thick gymnastic max, gymnastics mats, just to give you guys a visual picture. So I was climbing up a route that was at the top of my ability. I got about halfway up, and that next hold was way out of reach. I would have to step on this tiny little hold with my right foot and reach up to another tiny hold with my left hand. And so I climbed back down. Uh, someone saw me do this, and they walked over to me and said, just try it. Just go for it. And so I did. I climbed back up. I got stuck in the same spot. But this time, I planted my right foot, stepped really hard, reached up with my left hand, got my fingertips on this crimp, crimp hold, slipped, fell, landed on my feet, and rolled onto my back. They walked over to me and said, you know, are you OK? And I said, yes. And they said, well, how do you feel? And I said, I feel great. I almost had it. You see, for me, I had way more pride in myself for going for it and falling than when I did when I just climbed back down. Falling doesn't have to mean failing. And so for me, that is living to the level of my smile. It's challenging myself. It's pushing myself out of my comfort zone. It's going for it and sometimes coming up short. And this relates to all aspects of life. Go for it. Try it. But if you do, put in so much effort so if you do come up short, you can still be proud that you tried. We are full of so much potential that is just waiting to be tapped into. Don't leave that sitting on the table. Explore, adventure, become someone who tries something new. It doesn't have to be anything big, but start small. You'll watch your confidence soar. <laughs> Thanks. Now, I know, I know there are challenges to trying new things. Some of you guys might be hearing me speak and say, yeah, well, I don't have the time or the money, or I don't know where to start. But start small. Maybe it's something you already do. If date night is dinner in a movie, pick up dinner and eat it in the back of your pickup truck. And then go watch one of those free movies that are in the park. Look at billboards or social media advertisements. Um, or just look up unique things to do in your area. There's events that are happening all throughout the city, and they would love to have you. <sighs> I, can't, I can't say it enough. Um, go, go attend city fairs. Attend high school musicals. Try a new art project. Build a fort in your living room. Explore the downtown Skyway system. Make something out of toilet paper rolls. Have a Cheerio stacking competition, read comic books, or just learn about something new. Sometimes we get stuck in these daily routines, or sometimes we feel really stuck in life. Maybe it's time for a change. Now, there's a ton of challenges out there. You could try something new every day for 30 days, or you could try something new every day for a year. But I don't want this to be a challenge, because then what happens? You start doing it for the challenge and not for yourself. And if you mess up, you start feeling guilty. How many of you have tried a 30-day diet? I definitely have. You don't have to raise your hand. It's fine. You don't have to raise your hand. But if you made it, what happened on that 31st day? Exactly. Okay. I don't want trying something new to be that. This is a lifestyle for us to just have new experiences, to step out of our um, comfort zone, to get out of our daily routines, to add some excitement, 
to gain confidence, to make new connections, and to live to the level of your smile. Because if that shy little girl who bit her preschool teacher in the face can stand up here and give a speech in front of all of you today, you may not even know what you're capable of yet. So to each of you I say, let's make life more memorable. Welcome to the Dunwoody Legacy. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, great job, Jazz. Thank you for that great message and those words of wisdom and, and the encouragement for our graduates. We now want to recognize some of our student accomplishments from the class of 2022. Dunwoody's Alumni Association recognizes the importance of attendance in the world of work and believes that regular and reliable attendance is an essential part of developing good work habits and should always be a cornerstone of Dunwoody's education, of Dunwoody's education model. As such, Dunwoody's Alumni Association established the Attendance Award. To qualify for these awards, students must attend 98% or more of their class sessions, virtual and or in person, during, the entire, during their entire Dunwoody career. Would all those students who have received an Attendance Award please stand so we can recognize your attendance. Please be seated. We recognize students who achieve outstanding grade point average through Latin honors. Cum laude recognizes students with a grade point average of 3.5 to 3.69. Magnum cum laude for grade point averages of 3.7 to 3.89. And summa cum laude for students who achieve a grade point average of 3.9 or higher on a four point scale. With all those students who are graduating with Latin honors, please stand and congratulations on your outstanding academic performance. <clears throat> please be seated. Would the Phi Theta Kappa members please stand? Phi Theta Kappa is the International Honor Society for two year colleges. Membership in Phi Theta Kappa. Membership in Phi Theta Kappa requires members to maintain a 3.5 grade point average, and members are expected to develop leadership skills and engage in community service. Congratulations on your commitment to the tenants of Phi Theta Kappa. Please be seated. Will students who received academic excellence, diversity and inclusion, or student leadership awards please stand? Congratulations on your demonstrated excellence and commitment to academic achievement and the campus community. Please be seated. We want to recognize any alumni who are here with us today. We know that some of our current students have family members and friends who also attended the college. If you're a graduate of Dunwoody, please stand or wave so that you can be recognized. Please be seated. Will the faculty of Dunwoody College of Technology please stand and remain standing throughout the conferring of degrees. We will first award the certificates. Will the certificate candidates please stand and remain standing. President Wagner, these candidates for graduation have been approved by the faculty and have met or are about to meet all of the requirements so that they may be awarded a certificate. On behalf of the Board of Trustees of Dunwoody College of Technology and under authority granted by the Minnesota Office of Higher Education and the Higher Learning Commission and upon completion of the required curriculum under the direction of Dunwoody faculty, I now confer upon you the certificate listed in the commencement program and all the privileges and obligations pertaining thereto. You may be seated. Will the students who are candidates for the Associate of Applied Science degree please stand and remain standing.
President Wagner, these candidates for graduation have been approved by the faculty and have met or are about to meet all of the requirements so that they may be awarded their associate's degree. On behalf of the Board of Trustees of Donnelly College of Technology and under authority granted by the Minnesota Office of Higher Education and the Higher Learning Commission, and upon completion of the required curriculum under the direction of Donnelly faculty, I now confer upon you the Associate of Applied Science degree listed in the commencement program and with that degree, all the privileges and obligations pertaining thereto. You may be seated, graduates. Will the bachelor's degree candidates please stand and remain standing? <laughs> President Wagner, these candidates for graduation have been approved by the faculty and have met or are about to meet all of the requirements so that they may be awarded their Bachelor of Science or Bachelor of Architecture degree. On behalf of the Board of Trustees of Dunwoody College of Technology and under authority granted by the Minnesota Office of Higher Education and the Higher Learning Commission, and upon completion of the required curriculum under the direction of Dunwoody faculty, I now confer upon you the Bachelor of Science or Bachelor of Architectural degree listed in the commencement program, and with that degree, all the privileges and obligations pertaining thereto. You may now be seated, students and faculty. We will now award the diplomas. Our first graduate to receive her diploma is student speaker uh, Bridget Daldorf, Associate of Applied Science and Engineering Drafting and Design. And now, the Associate of Applied Science graduates from Automotive Collision Repair and Refinishing, Henry Bautista Cortez. Justin Tyler Lamont. Noah M. Mars. Stephen Zaspel. And now, the Associate of Applied Science graduates from Automotive Service Technology, Cole Broom. <laughs> Kevin James Cordova. <clears throat> Carlton Fodorko. Jonathan Gardner. Drake Jeffrey Gullickson. Benjamin Jacob Hanner. Dylan Hicks. Patrick Janke. Kanan Michael Johnson. Cole Johnson. Michael Peshik. Jackson Thomas Peterson. Holden Michael Whiting. <laughs> Lauren, 
Lana Walter. Sean Jarrell Wood. And now the Associate of Applied Science graduates from Honda Professional, Professional Automotive Career Training, Joshua Robert Matt, Matson. And now the Associate of Applied Science graduates from Toyota's Technician Training and Educational Network, Matthew Freeman. Jonathan Hohenstein. Justin Kerstetter. Miles Whaley. Christian Zhang. And now the graduates uh, for the Bachelor of Science graduates from Applied Management and Leadership, Crystal Murphy. And now the Bachelor of Science graduates from Business Management and Leadership, Fabulous T. Moore. Deborah Stack. And now the Associate of Applied Science graduates from Computer Networking Systems, Tyler Backus. <laughs> Solomon Benning. Mason Davidson. Magnild Waltrina Eilers. Connor Jacoby. Ben Kessner. Julian Nelbone Decker. John Ulrich. And now the Bachelor of Science graduates from Computer Systems Analysis, Eric Jones. Ashley Lords. And now, Bachelor of Science graduates from Cybersecurity, Mosin Abunada. Bryson William Garcia. Jared Andrew Herr. Sadia Omar. And now, Associate of Applied Science graduates from Web Development, Ryan David Anderson. And now, the Associate of Applied Science graduates from Web Programming and Database Development, Jackson Lewis Band. Tony Condon. Riley Truax. <laughs> and now the Bachelor of Science graduates from Construction Management, Alexis Ann Marie Jackson. <laughs> Elliot John Mortensen. <laughs> Nathan Swanson. Yeah. 
Zach Tembrell. And now the Associate of Applied Science graduates from Construction Project Management, Blaine Joseph Fennick. Jacob Bergman. Tiana Carver. Alba Alicia Gonzalez Perez. Logan Gunner Griggs. Zoe Heron. <laughs> Maxwell Jones. Samuel Joseph Klein. Nicholas Knutson. Andrew Kolb. Morgan Michael Reinbold. Carl Schaefbauer. Tate Skogquist. Catherine Steele. Christopher Williams. And now the certificate graduates from Construction Project Management, Kalisha Barnes. Bradley A. Strike. Andrea Schubick. And now the Associates Applied Science graduates from the Electrical Construction and Maintenance, Paul Albitz. <laughs> Alex Giovanni Alvarado. <laughs> Cameron Anderson. <laughs> Alexander David Ruslan Atkins. Brandon Baker. Joshua Bodlevic. Kyle Daniel Bryan. Jackson Conan. Samuel Collins. Tian Dang. Maxwell Dreesen. Colin Gregory Eckberg. Andrew James Edwards. Shadi Elseed. Gunnar Engen. Tori Engen. Dante Hajani. Joseph M. Hausman. Jack Irwin Hines. Blaze Jacob Hennem. Nathan Hiles. Nate Andrew Johnson. Nicholas Michael Johnson. John Paul Kellner. Garrett 
Cohn. Zach Lucas. Patrick McGraw. Kevin James Murphy. How you doing? Denise Nickens. <laughs> Sorry. Brooks Owen. Joe Rear. Jack Rockala. Isaac Thomas Roy. Jackson Schmidt. Mason Schmidt. Chandler Durbin Starr. Jack Steinke. William Andrew Stone. Matthew Tewitt. And now the Associate of Applied Science graduates from the Electrical Construction and Design Management, Thomas Maxwell. Elizabeth Alma Nielsen. Jared Michael Schweiss. Colin Strelo. Lucas Willis. Vance Tigon. And now the Associate of Applied Science graduates from the HVAC Installation and Residential Service. Jason Fernando Gutama, Hara. Nelson David Johnson. Thomas Peterson. Jude Rongstead. And now the Associates of Applied Science graduates from HVCR System Servicing, Robert Bjorgen. Lance Maurice Castle. Jason Richard Colden. Samuel DeVito. Luke David Hansen. Drew Larson. Austin Lucas. Jason Nowoski. Olivia Rangich. Trenton Silney. Austin Tischer. Seth Daniel Valento. And now the Associate of Applied Science graduates from Surveying and Civil Engineering Technology, Isaiah Bettinger. And now the Associates of Applied Science graduates from Radiologic Technology, Mariah Ailman Garcia. Tiffany Marie Anderson. Congratulations, Tiffany. Paige Ardizon. Well 
Peyton Groves. Uh, Becky. Becky A. Johnson. Angela LaCroix. Adam Joseph Lockram. Evan Henry Massop. Dakota Navy. Caitlin Pedersen. Nicole Smith. And Sarah Town. Laura May Walter. Chandra Wirch. And now, the Associate Applied Science graduates from Automated Systems and Robotics. Lucas Bridges. Riley LeBlanc. Jordan Loshaw. Jessica Sanlutza. Jenna Throw. Bastian Shane Van Hofwagen. And now it is my pleasure to introduce the very first graduating class of the Bachelor of Science graduates from Automation and Controls Engineering Technology. Blake Bodine. Travis Granlund. <laughs> Abigail Nicole Ratcliffe. <laughs> Matthew Alexander Schneider. And now, the certificate graduates from Design for Manufacturing 3D Printing. Adiel Contrera and Andrade. Charlie Falk. And now the Associate Applied Science graduates from Electronics Engineering Technology, John Humphreys. Gavin Jolliffe. And now the Associate of Applied Science graduates from Electronics Technology, Vasu Adesh Ramlakan. Shia Vang. And now the Associate of Applied Science graduates from Engineering, Drafting, and Design. Dylan Desai. Alexander Goodno. Guy Grove. Jonathan Horgan. Shane Kelb. Anthony Corwicki. Ronald Molina. Brian Rivera. Jared Sandlutza. Congratulations. 
Joshua Tao. And now the Associate of Applied Science graduates from Industrial Controls and Robotics, Carrion Hodges. Colin Jacobs. Paul Mickelson. Anthony Singh. Kong Vang. Jacob Scott Wessel. David Yang. And now, the Associate of Applied Science graduates from Machine Tool Technology, Jack Bornt. Hunter Duncan. Eric Fodstad. Connor Gavick. Alexander Eibel. Trevor Osborne. Aaron Walla. Joseph Wells. And now the certificate graduates from Right Skills Now for Manufacturing. Derek Dougherty. And now the Associate of Applied Science graduates from Welding and Metal Fabrication, Riley Bursey. Eric Helcom. Zachary Hayes. Tannen Isaac Holt. Kelvin Daniel Job. Ryan Bernard Johnson. Timothy John Jordan Jr. Thomas K. Nathan Dean Madison. Dan Milovitz. Vance Opitz. Gabriel Murphy Steinmetz. Cody Teese. Alex Vandekar. Samuel David Warash. Emily Louise Way. Maxwell James Wilson. Matthew James Yagi. And now the certificate graduates from Welding Technology, Samira Hussein Aden. Christian Inyana Mawa. Colton McKinney. Sadiq Mohammed Osman. And now the Associates of Applied Science graduates from Architectural Drafting and Design, Jonathan Cruz Estrada. Blair Deck. 
Michaela Epps. Well done, Michaela. Pedro Gaeos. Yeah. William Geis. Yeah. Olivia Nelson. Hunter, sorry, excuse me. Mina Hunter Baltes. Lauren Johnson. Madeline Coomer. Michael Laith Jr. Xavier Neal. Jonathan Olson. Mia Rose Peters. Jacqueline Ruiz Gomez. Elida Silviera. Gabriel Smithson. Reed Tesnes. Puependeno Wenosiku. And now the Bachelors of Architecture graduates from Architecture. Madison McClay Ahrens. Marina Fuchs. Joshua Ian Franco. Carissa Carey Frenchu. <laughs> Taylor Allen Grow. Tanner Jeffrey Cohen. Aaron Kopp. Fauci Mua. Andrew Joseph Nelson. <laughs> Olivia Karen Nelson. Brandon Thomas Peach. Austin Joseph Radstall. Marco Antonia Salavars. <laughs> Megan Ann Strom. Samuel James Strom. Elvis Vo. And now, the Associates of Applied Science graduates from Graphic Design. Cassie Braun. Will Bratton. Max Christensen. Omatayo Famodou. Charlie. Cody Robert Jackson. <laughs> Catherine Kelly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Casey Larson. <laughs> Zachary Taylor McLeod. <laughs> Libby Louise McGrath. <laughs> Mason Miller. Lance Nelson. Thomas Stoffer. Yankang Tao. Hannah Washington.
and now the Bachelors of Science graduates from Interior Design. Liliana Grace Cooper. Sharbella James Farhat. <laughs> to Sergio Funk. <laughs> Laura Ann Greenspan. <laughs> Brianna Lee Johnson. <laughs> Elizabeth Estelle Maples. Sarah Elizabeth O'Brien. Gabrielle Jordan Paulson. Ashley Christine Rose. Glenmar Solitero. <laughs> Neilan Thompson. Elliot Ederson Twiggs. <laughs> Kaya Dorothy Mork Van Patten. <laughs> Teresa Lee Wangsness. <laughs> Abigail Coet Wallet. And now it's my pleasure to introduce our very first graduating class of electrical engineers, Nicholas John Jansen. Emily Jean McGraw. Jacob Anthony Socek. Joshua Howard Wirtz. And now the Bachelor of Science graduates from Industrial Engineering Technology. Richard Grigolite. Ace High. Thomas Johnson. Benjamin Lars Newkirk Lito. Well Tak Nugen. Oing Sin. Well Leif Hansen Smith. Well Christopher Allen Suter. Joseph Anthony Zuzik. And now the Bachelor of Science graduates from Mechanical Engineering. Jace Anderson. Thomas Jacob Carr. Brian Gonzalez Melgar. Well Joseph James Starry. Fong Vang. And now the Bachelor of Science graduates from Software Engineering. Andrew Egley. Sean Michael, Michael Gregor. Leo Lee. Jared Allen Matheson.
With the class of 2022, please rise. And as you do so, move the tassel on your cap to the left to signify your status as a graduate. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the class of 2022. All right, graduates, now I'm going to ask you to do a favor. There's somebody out there in this auditorium that's been there for you along your journey that led you to this spot tonight. So why don't you turn around or find them, point to them, and give them a round of applause for all they've done to support you. Okay. Graduates, I ask you to please take your seat. Before I make my concluding remarks, I want to remind you that we will be having a recessional at the end of the ceremony. So parents, partners, friends, and guests, please remain seated during the recessional, and you can meet your graduates right outside the auditorium uh, at the conclusion of the ceremony. Well, congratulations, graduates. Today's commencement ceremony marks a great accomplishment and something in which you should take great pride. You've taken a giant step to improve the quality of your life through the immediate jobs and great careers that Dunwoody Education makes possible. Enjoy the significance of what you have accomplished today. We all share in your pride and excitement, and you now begin the next step of your journey, a journey that now includes being a Dunwoody alumni. We hear from employers all the time that they hire Dunwoody graduates first. We have employees tell us their best employees are Dunwoody graduates. Employers tell us how Dunwoody graduates are ready to hit the, hit the ground running on day one. When you tell people that you attended Dunwoody, you'll hear about Dunwoody's great reputation, as I do when I'm out and about talking to people. Every time I mention Dunwoody, they say, that's a great school. I know somebody who went there, and he or she is doing great right now. And you're going to continue to hear those things throughout your career. And that's Dunwoody's reputation. And that reputation has been built by a host of alumni that have come before you. It was built by men and women who have sat in the same seat you're sitting in tonight. It was built by men and women who graduated from Dunwoody and went out into the workforce and helped companies thrive by being the best technicians, most creative problem solvers, and the go-to person when things weren't working. It was built by alumni who worked their way into leadership positions, it was built by alumni who started their own companies. It was built by the commitment to excellence, hard work, and discipline that Dunwoody alumni exhibit in every job they complete. The Dunwoody legacy is evident all around us, from the buildings Dunwoody alumni design and build, to the companies they've started, to the products they've manufactured, to the designs they've created, to the things they've fixed and the projects they've managed. It's humbling and overwhelming to look at the impact Dunwoody alumni have had and continue to have on our neighborhoods, our communities, our city, our state, and our nation. And now, you start the next leg of your journey, you carry a responsibility to perpetuate Dunwoody's great reputation through your actions and accomplishments. What you did to finish your ed education the discipline, dedication, and commitment you demonstrated in some of the most challenging times we have ever faced has prepared you for success in a very different and difficult world. And the world needs you more than ever. We need you to keep industry moving, to help economies grow, to be the talent so many companies need so we as a state and nation have the capacity for economic success. We need you, as so many Dome alumni have, to go into the world and fix what is broken, to use your education to build a, strong, a stronger communities and a better world. We know you'll live up to this charge because you've been equipped with a Dome education, and you have demonstrated the ability to overcome significant, difficult challenges. You now represent the best Dome has to offer, and your actions and accomplishments will build the Dunwoody legacy for the next generation of Dunwoody students. 
and we all look forward to celebrating with you and hearing about all of your successes and all the great things you're going to do when you leave the auditorium tonight. So thank you for attending Dunwoody. Congratulations on this great accomplishment. And don't forget, we're going to have a recessional, and you can meet your graduates outside the auditorium. Thank you, and uh, this concludes our ceremony. <laughs>